morning ladies and gentlemen boys and girls men and women welcome to attorney commander jr kupuk by chesson talk show as we move into the weekend today is the sixth day of the second month of the new year february 6 and we are in black history month I woke up this morning with a sense of joy knowing that Joe Biden the president of the United States of America is a blessed man. He's blessed because this is not his first shot at the presidency of America. But that's my first lesson. So let's delve into my topics already, okay? Uh my topics today are Joe Biden is a blessed American man. Two, President George Weah is a serious threat to Liberia and Liberian people's futures. Three, fleecing of African nations by our first ladies. So let's get into my lesson. I was talking about Joe Biden and how he is a blessed man <clears throat> you see leaders are born and not made i know this and every leader knows it because from the time you are born people tell you all through your life that you are a leadership product i've been told that all my life not only by my family people i meet in the street i told you how the first time i knew i was going to be a soldier i i was even thinking about it i was in liberia they had just killed my people i was fighting hard to graduate from law school i had graduated from cotton and then i had i had come down and i was doing door time I had just entered law school, didn't know what my future was going to be. I was just wandering up and down the street. And as I was coming down Benson Street, right near the soldier armory there, where they used to keep the armory, and across the street where they uh, took us. <clears throat> so I was coming right in that because I knew exactly where I was. Right in there, there was a Lebanese store right across the road from there, from my Toka shop. Right in that area, while walking, this prophet church woman, I didn't even know this woman, the, the prophetess woman who would be going around with the bell in that white gown singing. The woman just grabbed my hand and she looked at me and she said, you'll be a soldier. And she just left my hand and kept walking. No, I turned around. I was so mad. I was mad because I was, I was thinking about a Liberian soldier. So I was like, I'm glad I didn't see something, yell something out to that woman. Because my mind was far away from Noko. I was yet instructed to go to law school and become a lawyer and make some money and make my life. And I was even thinking about the thing. And this woman was passing, just grabbed my hand and looked me in the eye and said, you'll be a soldier. And she just left my hand and walked away. And I was pissed. 
I just look around at her and said, these crazy people. I said to myself, you know, I said, these crazy people. I just kept walking. And I told you, it wasn't until I was in the U.S. Army. I think it was my second year in the Army or something. I was dressing, was dressing to go to dinner or something. We had just come from exercising. And we exercised at 5 in the morning. So this was like maybe 6, 6.30. We're getting ready to go eat breakfast. And I dressed, put on my uniform. I was expecting myself in the mirror. And the thing just hit me out of nowhere. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. It just hit me. This one voice just came back to me, looking in the mirror. I told you you'd be a soldier. I stopped. I stopped. I just stood there and thinking, I said, how did that woman know? And this was years past. So you know, people have done the same thing to Joe Biden. They have done the same thing to Joe Biden. And when he has heard that from the spiritual realm, because he ain't gonna go look, he doesn't, when you are a leader, blessed leader, nobody from the Christian realm will hold your hand and tell you who you are. Except it's from the realm that you are dealing in. But if you're dealing in the spiritual realm of the divine, that message can come from any source. It can come from any source. So Joe Biden knows. Because he didn't know he wouldn't have ran three times to be president of the United States of America. He was told that from small. And when he became a senator, and his life appeared to be growing in the realm of which he had been told all his life. When the people around him notice it, the leeches, the friends, and all the other people who saw the potential in Joe Biden as a unifier, solidifier to bring people together, they came around him and they kept pushing him. I mean, you can do it. I mean, you, you're capable, you, you can go, you, you can talk to the senators, you can do it, you a people person. So he ran the first time, then he ran the family bad luck, he ran the second time. That's why after Joe Biden was Obama's vice president, he had no spirit to run the third time because he had done it twice already. He has lost personally. He has lost financially. He has lost spiritually. See, so he himself was kind of broken. Then to come be the vice president of the first black man. But he believed in himself. And he believed in a diverse America. So whether... <clears throat> It would have been seen upon as a diminishing of himself to go to be the white vice president of a black man, the first black man to be elevated to the position of presidency. A black man who he knew had the potential, the knowledge, the education, the rhetorics, and the ability to perform. He believed it. If Joe Biden didn't believe in Obama, he would never have accepted to be Obama vice president. The first black man in the world to head the United States of America, Joe Biden would never have put his professional life on the line, his professional life on the line, if he didn't think Barack Obama was capable, competent, and had the aptitude to do the work of president of the United States of America. But he, was, he still had doubts. 
he still had doubts in himself too. So we got to ask Joe Biden because he the only one can tell us when he became fully competent and knowledgeable and fully aware of the abilities of Barack Obama that he could sit back and say, I'll put my trust in this guy. He's the guy to carry me. Joe Biden had to make a decision. He took a risk going with Obama. Yeah, maybe he knew in yeah, he knew he in the Senate because Obama had been in the Senate. So he knew Barack Obama's ability from there. But he may not have trusted him to transfer that ability to the presidency of the United States of America. So that was still a challenge. Because Obama had gone down, the Biden name, the Biden family, everything was going down too. He said, yeah, he went to put his trust in that man, that nigga, and, and he just got what he deserved. So that alone, that alone, after all that, Biden was tired. Then Trump came along. He wasn't going to fight with Trump again. So Biden just said, nah, I don't want to do it no more. Let me sit down. sit down. But his son, he always tell you how his son told him. He said, Dad, do it. Do it for me. <laughs> so after four years of seeing our country run amok, our national security threatened, our president sitting down with communists, and evil men of the world and don't want anybody to record anything they say, that is a threat to the United States of America. One lunatic talking with the lunatics of the world without any American around him to record what he's saying so the rest of us can hear it. That is insanity of the leadership of the United States of America itself, our Congress people, that was insanity. Never in our history have we done this. You enabling that man to be a dictator by sitting with dictators, tearing the notes of the quarter and not letting the American people know what discussions were held between those dictators and our useless president, Donald Trump. So after seeing that for four years, when he was called upon to take the matter and run away again, it was a challenge for Joe Biden. It was a challenge. And if you have been challenged all your life, like this man and me, you understand you understand where you're coming from and why he is a blessed leader. <clears throat> because good players do not fight for jerseys. They don't. When you're a good player and you keep forcing yourself, forcing yourself, you keep failing because you cannot predict God's time. When God ordain you as a leader, you are a leader on God's time, not on your time, not on your friend's time, not on your mom's time, not on your part time. You are a leader on God's time. Why? Because God does not breed suck-ups. He does not breed brown noses. He does not breed ass kisses. He breeds leaders and men of integrity, of law and order, because when you fear God, you fear law. God is law. That all God is. We are here and he regulates us. All the gods are here to keep us civilized, 
to keep us under restrictions, to limit our excesses. That's the power of God. And we are punished. We are punished physically or spiritually for our excesses. That exceed the realm of the divine. So when you understand all these things, you understand where they're all coming from. You see? And don't be deceived because people can use religion and spiritual religion to deceive you too. Like that woman I hear, and, 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 and what about her name? Francis Do, the white lady he's showing, talking for Joe Biden, says she had a vision that Joe Biden and with spiritual people. That is bullshit. When a man who supports Joe Biden comes out and bring you a recording like that, anybody could tell that woman to record that thing. I could pay somebody to record it. So we cannot be deceived. We cannot be deceived with foolishness. We can. And besides that, foreigners cannot tell us who our leaders should be. That's instructing us to the spiritualism, that deceitful spiritual instructions. Trying to persuade my people to do things they are not meant to do. And using the spiritualism and the, re the religious churches and things to do that. My people, that's bullshit. God, Jesus will not interfere in your political realm. Jesus has limits too. God has limits. He makes us wise. So we make decisions. You and I come and send other people to make us wise. Why would God send other people to me to make me wise? It will not work. I told you how this, the spiritual woman held my hand and said, you be soldier. I almost cuss her. Because I was in a different realm. So I had to see that realm myself. And from all indications in my society, just like in America for the past four years, you can't tell a sensible man that what was going on was or is right. You can't. And this was the time God had appointed for Joe Biden, a man with a wealth of experience, a man with a wealth of failures, with a man with a wealth of sorrows, a man with a wealth of empathy, sympathy, understanding, practical living, and divine blessings. A leader is molded by time and divine blessings and intervention, not by man or the surroundings around him. No. If it wasn't for God and Bo and, and, and Biden's son, I think that was Bo, right? Bo that died, this man would never pick up that mantle again to be president. But it, he was divine, and his son on his dying bed. So you got to do it. You are the man. So he had to step to the plate. And that's why, as soon as Biden said he wanted to be president, I had no reservation. I didn't have to watch him travel all over America. No. As long as the man made Barack Obama successful. He was my man. He was a man of diversity. He was a man of deep understanding, of deep consciousness, of deep sincerity. This man stood by Barack. And he told Barack too, Barack was scared. Man, look, you got to understand politics. Sometimes when Joe Biden used to come and say, my man, come here, you can do this shit. He said it open one time. He said, you can do this shit, man. And the Barack got up there and performed. Because right there, a tall and experienced and knowledgeable man like me, that Barack Obama had reservations, had serious fears. 
has serious apprehension as the first black man who has been kept down in a society that is racist, race supremacist, and hit black people. Joe Biden was his cushion. Joe Biden was his support. Joe Biden was his teacher. Joe Biden had his back. And Joe Biden is a human being. That's why despite all that, we still got to be tight on him. Hold him tight to his promises. Because he got too many forces coming at him that want to confuse him, disturb his focus. Even the black people, we're trying to confuse him too. That's why when I teach, I try to teach from the objective perspective, not from my personal uh, idiosyncrasies and issues and problems. I try not to interject it. I try to come from a straight and honest perspective so you know what I'm talking about. So you know, I point out our problems just as well as the problems of other people. Because that's the only way we can attain a real constitutional democratic society where we stand as check and balances on our leaders. We hold them accountable for what they say, whether they have done good for us in the past or not. When you take the mantle of leadership, you are held responsible on the law and God to fulfill your obligation when you swear and put your hand up to fulfill your duties and obligations under the laws and constitution. And it takes years of understanding that for us who have been bred in situations of corruption and the only way we can change our society to grow like America and the West. Somebody said it on on a godly show. We gotta hold our leaders accountable. We gotta punish them. And I've been seeing that for years, for 40 years now I've been seeing that. That's why I never joined in the government. I never joined anybody because if I go to Liberia and my cousin running for president, and he know I'm a lawyer in our society, I was in best government before him. I'm talking about Ben and I, you right now. Are you running for president in my country? Do you not call me? You will not notify the rest of us who are educated? Once he didn't do that and put his knee out to president of Liberia, I knew he was an idiot too. I knew he was a dummy. That all the years in school, he didn't understand nothing. And power. And money was his goal. That was when I saw Ben and I read the first time. The first thing I asked him, I said, you mean you run for, ran for president? You didn't notify the family? And he told me, he said, I notified who I wanted to. I said, oh, oh, oh. So right there, what does that man tell me? I wasn't significant to him. Not because I wasn't his relative, because I've always been a man to check Ben and I Yuri. I never did that cousin cousin bullshit with him. I know my cousin. I know his ways. Me and Ben and I Yuri have been together from small. And I never tolerated his bullshit. I told him straight every time what I felt. But my cousin ain't no small boy to play with. He understand Liberian society and Liberian people and the corruption of our people. So, but I couldn't serve under them. I'm not that kind of man. I'm not a dear leader man. And my cousin know that. I'm not a dear leader man. I'm a divine Challenge leader. 
I ain't come to sit on a little kid for money and say, yes, sir, yes, sir, Mr. President, Mr. President. I ain't that kind of man. You take that bullshit away from me. God, Jesus didn't make me that kind of man. You know, because everybody got their profession. So as soon as I joined, joined the army, I knew that was a profession for me. I knew it right away. I knew it because everything in my life pushed me in that direction. Pushed me in that direction. I didn't need nobody to advise me. Yeah, my mom says she told me once or twice. I knew long before that. And my life always was set in that direction. From high school, from elementary school. So my mom didn't see me growing up in those days. But that's what my life, a leader, a security, a people protector, a nation protector. And when I came and joined the superior military, it just blew my mind. So I just wanted to learn as much as I could, and I did. So when you see a, a male and Messi, a real leader, I can tell you, He's a real leader. You know, Joe Biden, not a Donald Trump. Trump is a bully. I'm spending this much time on Joe Biden because it's significant that we know this. This man is not a bully. That's why we got to stand strong with him. I don't like people pushing him around and let him do the job of the American people, unite us, diversify this nation, limit the races. Nobody care how you feel. Nobody care how you talk. That's freedom of speech. That's your right. You can wear all the crosses you want to wear, put all the coons on your head. You're lucky you can turn upside down and walk on your head to impress us that you're bad. It ain't matter. But when you go beyond your limits, and infringe on the dignity and pride and constitutional rights and privileges of other American people, as you have done for 400 years. It got to cease and exist. It got to cease and desist at some time. And for those of us that are conscious, conscious, and have served this nation, and have proven ourselves time again as patriots. We gotta stand up sometime and say enough. It's enough. We need real leaders. We need people who understand our constitution. Not dummies who have just done what they want to do despite the laws for years, just a banana republic, but because they're so advanced, we can't see the bananaism in them. It's changed. It's changed. Barack Obama said it. Sam Cook said it. It's changed. This is the changing world. And you better believe it. And Biden, the man who ran two times and not a third time, and is the man, shall lead us in that direction. Shall lead us in that direction. It's already started. But we just got to keep him focused, straight, and consistent. So, my young children, four years of Donald Trump was four years of insane bullshit. Now we got to reel ourselves in on a real leader, on a man who is tested, who is proven who has been challenged both spiritually and, spir and, and physically with triumphs, trials, tribulations, and is still the man Biden is blessed. Aluta! Continua.
My Liberian people, let me put them on top of There are issues in the world we cannot change. President George Weah is a serious threat to Liberia and Liberian people's futures. As I was saying, that's why Jesus taught us about the prayer of serenity. That's a Christian teaching and it's very significant to us in understanding in appreciation, appreciating and dealing with all the ramifications of life's challenges that we encounter on this earth. The prayer of serenity and understanding its meaning application in our daily lives help us. Know the things you can change. Know the things you cannot change. And be blessed to understand the difference between these two things when you see them and understand them and appreciate them and know them. The things you can change and the things you, can, you cannot change. And the realism of encountering both of them and understanding through divine intervention what they are. So let's relate that to the Liberian society. Knowing the things we can change and the things we cannot change is the basic thing for the Liberian people to understand. And first of all, when you are educated, you have to understand this thing the intricate nature of it, to change your society, to change the minds of your people. Now, what are the things in Liberia and most black societies throughout the world we cannot change? Our in-knit, close-knit societal relationship. All our countries are poor, mainly have extended family relationships or cultural links that relate to extended families, to, uh, that relate to relationships with one father having many children. And we're accepting it because of our culture. So that in itself creates a vast extended family. And if our nation is as small as Liberia, if our communities are as small as our communities in the Americas, in the Caribbean, it would be hard for us to really excel and grow like America, like Europe, like Russia, that has vast regions of nations coming together that one tribe may own one nation like Liberia and, and the chief will control that whole tribe or their leadership will true. So you got different diverse groups of people that are powerful that understand leadership, living that brought together in one system that we are still trying to do for 200 years nearly. That's why you see people in America and Russia, they fought bitter wars. The American Civil War, Washington East War, people died. And the methods of fighting in those days were brutal. People didn't do guerrilla fighting, most of the time they just came face to face and started shooting. The Indians brought about guerrilla fighting and all of that, the, the Native Americans, because they, they couldn't face the forces of the American army and all those kind of things who have been decimated. So they had to know how to hit and run. They know how to uh, ambush and all those kind of things. Those are guerrilla warfares. You know, so you never know when you're going to be hit. You never know. The, if you don't know the terrain, you're in grave danger. And those are the uh, uh, advantages that the Maroons in Jamaica had, that the, that, that the Zulus in Africa had. We know the ter terrain. When the British and people came, were killing them in their ants. They didn't know the terrain. Their way of fighting was not, was not like our way of fighting. 
We had Bushmen way of fighting. They came with a civilized way of walking in, marching on their line and marching with army. We came from the bushes and everywhere and were attacking these people. Also, when they made a gut at Gatling gun, it, it diminishes our means of attack. Because surprising people with that kind of weapon didn't matter. We didn't possess the same weapons. We had bow and arrows. You had to come within a certain distance for your weapons to be effective, like bow and arrows. But if you got a Gatling gun, you can sit there and shoot 300 feet. Well, I got to worry. Keep, keep coming. I would just sit there and just and kill all of you because your bow and arrow will never be effective. Your, 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 what do you call it? Those things that throw and rocks and things. What do you call those things? Um, uh, those slings. Those weapons that, that throw slings, that throw rocks and all. I can't think of it now. But those things that will be in a certain range for them to hit the target. And if it's uh, less than 300 feet, and those, web, those bullets can reach up to 300 feet, bye-bye. You're going to have the chance. So these were the disadvantages that made people weak, that made our methods of training and advancement different than people. So when you know the terrain and all the kind of you have a grave advantage. And, but you got to know and you got to have the skills to understand that as a verse group of people, you got to work together. And in order to maintain law and order among the diverse groups, you got to instill those orders. You got to know how to deal with your people. And this is where we are today in Liberia. Since 1822 to today, all of us that had to come together or been brought together against our wills. Liberia people didn't come together because we wanted to. We were forced to come together by our, against our will. Now we have managed to bring our society together to a grave extent. We still have this problem of extended families or for peace sake because of our differences. And we cannot continue to persist on this thing. Our country is dying because of it. So we're in every small niche society. The extended family can be a problem. The extended family can be a source of corruption a cause of failure and a cause of keeping the country down. Look at all our black nations in the world. We can't accept because everybody related to family and every family trying to live off the government. Get free stuff. And that's why I got to stop. Because until all of us can come to the consciousness of the fact that in order for our system to work, in order for all of us to benefit, despite the fact we are families, there must be a system to equally monitor, share, and punish people in our society. Everybody is my cousin. Everybody that related to me sometime or another. We all related one way or another in Liberia. You won't deny or not. Why you think the for peace sake stupidness they go on? Why you think why you think the you chop I chop bullshit they go on? Why you think the corruption and stealing still going on in our country? Because of the family ties, the influence of the family, the culture of the family, everything in our country rests on our culture that is based on the family from the foundation up. And ours is not like the American family that is unitary. That people just can get and say, oh, I'm going to live in a in another state. I'll be finished with your state. And they go there and they don't ever come back. Where you do that in Liberia? Where you go to county, we can't come to that county. Where you go in a city, we can't come to that city. In a small country like Liberia, where you can drive from Monrovia 
to 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 grant keep my country in three four hours in less than eight hours if the rules are good. And I talk about these rules that they they poor poor rules you got or what the country Ellen Johnson's Ellen rule. If we had decent roads, you could drive from Kipma to Maryland in less than eight hours. Or eight hours exactly. Our country not that big. But we have not sat down to understand the things we can change, the things we cannot change, and when we see them, how to deal with them. And the things we can't change is our family roots our extended family ties, our relationships, whether we like it or not, we all related some kind of way. That one, our people can't be broken. And we got to understand that after 200 years of intermarriages, we all be intermarried. Or way of the war system, whether good or bad, we all have benefited from that system one way or another. Right now, I got brothers that were chessons and no longer chessons, but we're still in touch. They're still my brothers. I ain't going to give them up because you can't make me grow up with somebody as my brother. I take care of that person as my brother. Then I find her, they're not my brother. But they're, my, they're still my brother. You think I would change my, my, my situation with that person because of that? No, our relationship goes deeper than blood. And if you don't understand that, you will fail time and time again. You can't bring people close to you and destroy them and try to turn them away from you. You can't do that. Because those are things we can change. Those are situations we have control over. So, Let's get this thing again. We cannot change our extended families, our roots, our unitary and extended family roots. We have to both those in Liberia. So we can't divide them. We can't change it. We'll always be one family. And that's why the peace sick and, and forgive them, oh, leader that in Lumen has persisted for so long because we are a family. And we keep the corruption, the criminality, the rape, everything in the family. Everybody hush, hush, hush. But when it goes beyond normality into the absurd and the insanity and the uselessness, that means our society has lost our discernment of the prayer of serenity. We have lost it. Because you got to know what you can change and what you cannot change. So despite the fact that we have this strong extended family root, our leadership has to understand that the things we, the things we have to change and maintain in our society is equality, is fairness among our family. If you don't keep that fairness and honesty and truthfulness among the family, you have a destructive nation. You have a destructive nation because no matter whether the family is unitary, is collective, is acclimated, amalgamated or not, without law and order and the sense of equality, the family self will fail. All of us now are equal in the family. We got poor members in the family. We got rich members in the family. We got family members going to school. So who not, who not uh, rich but need the, the help to go to school. We got children in the family who are, cannot eat anything because one greedy man in the family got all the land and things. And we cannot continue to persist in that because that is killing of the family itself. And that is what we fail to understand in the prayer of serenity. Jesus was loving. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was divine. Jesus was an example of perfection. And Jesus was a flogger 
or idiots. Hey, that is why you don't understand what Jesus. So everybody thinks Jesus isn't that, but forget the last part that Jesus the fuck idiots. Because when you love, when you care for, when you cherish, when you give everything you have, and it's running amok, and you don't really eat, you think when you're sick, when you need help in your feeble age, those same people who you show love to, who you gave everything to, will come back to take care of you. No, they will say, put that man in nursing home, man. That way they nursing home. Throw that man in the nursing home. We'll come see him once a year when we're in the city. And that what people wonder why the children can't come around them. Because when you overshower shower people with love, like George Weir did to his son now in France, a disgrace to our country and our people. Because the thing that I love, shower them with money you don't have, steal our money, and give that boy wealth. Let him do anything he wants to do. Now he's in a wealthy neighborhood, privileged. He doesn't know where he comes from. His father and mother are dumb. They will never understand the prayer of serenity. They can't. George, we are not a Christian. George, we are not. You talk to George, we are, as I'm talking to you about the prayer of serenity, how to break it down like this. He has no consciousness to do that. He can't explain it. He can't think it. And that's the man leading our country today with his wife who comes there and talk a lot of foolishness, tell her husband, how ah, every time her husband leaving, he puts money in a bag to bring back to his friends. You happy me like that? You ain't happy me like that. You happy me like that? You bringing me fish, but you're not teaching me how to fish. Why? Because you don't know how to fish either. You don't know. Your area of knowledge and wisdom is not being used to build your country. You're assuming another area that you have no understanding, wisdom, or knowledge of. And you think it's the running a little football club, a little friendship club, and that's what our country has been denigrated to, a club. That we are no more a nation. Because we have idiots. The leaders are idiots. Our country is full of young idiots. So we have nobody to understand what it means to have leaders, to have people of consciousness. And we're talking about Joe Biden, we're talking about Ben and I, we're talking about Elliot Cummings. We're talking about, I'm not impressed with these guys. I'm not. And I will tell you I'm not. Because they too don't understand the prayer of serenity. Look at Liberty Party. They had to change their chairman and put in another senator, a former senator. Now you tell me, if a party can be that dumb in the first place, why would I even want to associate with that party? Why would I want to associate with that party? Because in the first place, the people they change the chairman because they desire to. No. They change the chairman because of the pressure they're getting from people around the world. Seeing this man as a criminal and know he's a criminal and the world has condemned this man as a criminal. Then you take the criminal and put him in power. That tells me, like we will have rotten men, no men of consciousness. So let me run through my lesson now. Sydney will decide joining interest, conflict of interest. Because they take our thing, our whole government, as an extended family thing. This thing is not sad, Johnny, alone. It's been going on for long. But where do we stop it? Where do we say, no, we want our country to be like America. We want our country to be like Europe. And the only way we can be like that 
is to stop the stealing. Have accountability. Have freedom of speech. Have our people and children in school and work and getting paid. And understanding that you cannot work for one year free. You cannot even work for one week free or one month free and don't get your pay. Shit got to hit the fan. But if you sit down for one year, almost two years, you don't get paid. And you're there crying like they, excuse me, young children, bitches. And you're there crying like they, bitches. How you ever get help? That can't get no help. You people are, excuse me, kids, bitches. So, yeah, we are again. Men and women who for peace sake will sit down and lead, see their leaders getting thousands of dollar pay every month. Then they're sitting down and are fighting for their rights. Putting their cell under the cars, burning their bodies. That's insanity. Now look at all the corruption people in our party. Sure. Archie Bernard. Bright. These people are people from Dotan. They're seeing young criminals from Dotan. Why you think Archie Bernard can't fix the park garage? Because he's useless. All those cars gone. The park had a strive, thriving yes business. But yeah, he's there fighting with his sister, pushing his sister to the ground and all that kind of And you think we're not being in the newspaper? These people are useless. And your goddamn ruling are still. Finally, Sherman. The dumbest in our Senate. Siding with Vanny Sherman against the world. Huh? You think American people will just say, that, man, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a bribe. All the other criminals in America know we got in Liberia. They didn't point none of them out. All the other wicked people in America know we got. They're supporting and sending them money. Look at George Weir. The dummy of the world himself, America, putting lights up for him, making sure our country look bright. But it can't help we are. Because if you're putting up all those lights and our people haven't gotten paid for years, our children are in school, no money in our bank, what the use of the light? What is the use of the light? But if you think that's development, you can dance and shout and keep throwing yourselves under the car and burning yourselves. And when you're burning, you're coming in light so we can see your see the spots on your face. Because it's been so dark, we can't see you in the night. So when they burn you and beat your heads, you're coming in light. <laughs> say, oh, you people in there, you yeah, see this car, you yeah, see this bar, you yeah, see how I burn say, yeah, yeah, see, they will see it good. So that's the life of the idiots. Okay, so you'll do that one. So that vanish chairman. They haven't found a three missing chairman yet. One minute we hear dog and we are calling the people that pay the family. Then you say one dead, but we'll bring two. And we see the other two yet. We are getting in more trouble. He needs body parts for voodoo. The children stay in car here. Only a poor boy, Tommy Boy, uh, Billy Boy Smith, Tommy Billy Boy Smith in Liberia keep on asking, where the three children? Every time I see Tommy Boy Smith, I see where the three children. And the man worry about three children. The rest are often forgetting about that day. For peace sake, they're gone. You hear anybody uh, talking about three children again? Floppy, sloppy investigation. Our editor, auditors dying like dogs. Sloppy, flimsy investigation. No explanation, no real punitive action taken, no investigation, nothing. That one gone on the rock. Then what the next one is? Oh, we just talk some of bullshit. Hey, <laughs> chairs for school. We are saying we're bringing chairs for the school. No chairs. The schools can't even function. The building's falling apart. Our president enjoying the life. Because when you take a man who's not in his area and put him in an area that's challenging, 
and you got enablers all around him, telling him, my man, you can do it. We are with tissue. We'll make this law. We'll make that law. Let's, yes, this money disappear. No accountability or money. Then every time they do something good, our native people jump on and start clapping. Oh, oh. But the most of the people who come on Facebook and things to cheer the people up are their relatives and friends who has as corrupt at them. They have no vision or discernment of the prayer of serenity. Or they care about themselves, their tribes. And this is where our tribal people fail us. Time and time again, from the time of our war, when they sat down in Ghana and Nigeria and places and divided our ministries in tribes, divide our government into war sections. So many warring factions wanted a ministry for themselves. And this is what we're living under today. We're still dividing our ministries like that. And the rogues are still among us. And Ellen didn't change that. Ellen was scared. Everybody's scared. So this in that fight in us, after killing our own people for so many years now, we're so damn scared. We can't even come out of our damn shells. What the hell are we? We kill ourselves for 14 years. Hit ourselves. Now honor Ellen Johnson with all this. Excuse me, Jim. Bitches. Yeah? All the killing we did, all the massacring our people did, all the eating our human beings, did, all the cutting our neck. Now, nah, excuse me, Karen. Bitches. And it turned us to bitches. So I don't know what to tell you, my Karen, but this is where we are today. The, our legislator workers in KP for months, just a few days ago, last week, they were under the cars. Big men dressed up with hat suited and <laughs> you gotta excuse me. <laughs> Thomas two hours this you. Thomas said, Y'all kill me, y'all will come down to nothing. Just see big men dressed in their shackle hat, their suit. <laughs> then they take out their wash and everything to go on in the car for pay. How do people got a wash in the and the, the, the apple jack hat and all the kind of thing, man. Look, I look classy like the fashionista. Then you take all that thing off to go sit on the car because you get paid for one year. So how you got on all that clothes, my man? All the fancy thing, my man. I can't just it just blow my mind, you know. Then the the the, the, the chief justice that guy one hell of a Toyota floor runner with all the perks and picks on it. Hell, when they say ain't got no money, the people getting fifteen thousand dollar, they can they can go sign up for forty thousand dollar car. Gosh, let's keep on. Depending, so we got Clarice Ja finally replacing our boy, the millionaire sponsor of Darius Dillon, elected. Uh, and, and white balance unanimously selected chair for LP, Mr. Hassan Billity, FIFA criminal, destroyer of the nation's football system, that the man they appoint to be chair or LP. Now, LP, <laughs> you're going to praise Jesus Christ. I love my God. He's so good. Uh, good prayer. Don't fight for Jesse or not Jesus. You just sit down and tell him you're doing a stupid thing. You're wrong. Oh, go to hell, go to hell. Then we look Jesus with your kind of switch everything. Oh, yeah, you said Jesse wrong. Okay. LP, you chair of CPP. You're, you're carrying, you're carrying, you're carrying has some ability. Like you said, I would better than you and the rest of the Charles Taylor role, and the Ellen Johnson said he role. And, and it, oh, Borka, there's no classic girl for Borka. That was Ellie Pace over here. She won't see him. Borka, why you put Borka? From Totma, Torba, interim governments, LVP, 
Now running for president. <laughs> they're not Ellie Josie, they're not one person that is like international Liberian supporting device. We've been supporting Borga from the time he got out of high school. Borga is a Liberian government property. You want me to be a president? No, you can't be no damn president. You time to sleep now. You're going to face a national bed for Borga. Let him chill. Because Borga now work for Liberia. Yeah, right. You now work for Liberia from Totma to Toba through every regime to now. And we can't hear the Borga in any way significant in leadership. Now, all the other opportunists, your Borka coming to check out soon, his memory almost gone. They're trying to impress us that the public can remember the When he said, Oh, yeah, I forgot Lopa. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Papi, remember. Papi, <laughs> you see how I bring up the C4? Yeah? Joe, we are going one go, I mean, Papi won't go watch Dofa. Huh? Joe Borka never been to a football game before. Why the people pushing the old man to go do things he never did before? On a Tottenham, on a Torba, on a all the interim government, Joe Borka was never at the field. Now he say he won't go watch. Nofa, who pushing the old man up to that thing? You're coming with it, Nofa travel business now. You see how it start now? Everything Lofa, Lofa, Lofa. Because the Lofa man coming to be president now. We're not ready. We're not ready for leadership, man. At least not the leadership of Tony Commander J.R. Kupok by Chesson. Because I'm a man who has discernment and understanding and know that the peace for peace sake business and family ties and corruption and ripping and killing everything kind of cease and desist. It's over one hour. Let me proceed to my last topic. But that's it, my children. We live in a nation of deceitful rogues and liars. And now let me tell you, my last lesson, I ain't even going nowhere else. My last lesson, we have deceitful first ladies, just like Ellen Johnson Sally. They are all useless, lying, deceitful bitches. Yeah, they are. And then you were stealing Africa now for all these first ladies to have offices, to have money, to have projects. They are not giving constitutional authority to the legislature to have the offices. They are not approved to use budgetary money, allotment, to, for their projects. For all these women from Nigeria to Sierra Leone, including Liberia, the criminals of Liberia, got these first useless dummy witches calling their first lady, robbing our country for their husbands, and setting up all these deceitful programs saying to protect the children that are being raped by their husbands and the government officials their husbands have as leaders. What more can I say to Liberian people? I'm not speaking for Nigeria. I'm not speaking for Sierra Leone. I'm not speaking for any other damn African nation. The corruption and stealing in African nation too damn corrupt for me to fight for people other than my own people. I can't leave my country to fight for other people. My country is damn corrupt. My country is damn nasty. My country got criminals and useless women, prostitutes running around as first ladies of my country, using our money to protect their husbands raping our young children and boys and fixing organizations talking about protecting them. But yet, stealing millions and millions of dollars from our government without accountability, without budgetary enlightenment, without any legal, legal authorization from our Congress. And those are the same people supporting these people. Our country is dead. Africa is dead. AFL, you have my approval. Change the leadership. Aluta, continue. Have a good day, my people.